In today's video, I'm going to be unboxing and setting up the Anycubic Mega Pro 2-in-1 3D printer. Let's go. Okay, so we've got the printer here. It comes in this nice standard uh, cardboard box. So I'm gonna whip that open. Unnecessary plastic bag, but there we go. Okay, so after the first step of the unboxing, we are left with the XZ gantry, Y axis, build plate, and power unit all in one here and then this bag of standard 3d printer accessories what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up my timer um, and set the printer up and then you can have an estimation of how long this actually takes to get up set up once you've got it out of the box let's go the SD card heater silicone block you've got a spare hot end this looks like it'd be the spool holder. Got some spare screws. This is for cleaning the nozzle if it gets blocked. Another part for the spool holder. Got a nice uh, scraper. Micro USB cable. After sales service card. USB uh, adapter for this SD card in case your uh, laptop doesn't have a port, which is always handy. Some flush cutters. Allen keys and some more screws in here. The power cable, tiny sample of PLA filaments. And then in here, we've got the parts for the laser, including some very attractive sunglasses. Wow, they are dark, cannot see a thing. And a little piece of wood for testing and uh, some sort of sensor. Assembly instructions. Bigger than I thought, actually. It's a nice heavy printer, this. So that's the frame attached to the base now. It's nice and sturdy. Then once two of these screws on the side loosened to allow the filament holder to be attached, slide this in here and tighten them back up. Now it's a bit random that they've decided to make the spool holder square. Um, not a design I would have opted for, but there we go. I might actually redesign something for this um, that can be attached to this spool holder because also this is quite short. I've heard from a few of my filament customers that it won't actually hold my filament. But anyway, for now, I will set it up as instructed. Okay, so there's the little spool holder attached. Step three, we need to install these cables here. Down into the ports over here. They've been color coded, which is good. Okay, so that was nice and easy. And then uh, in terms of setup, that's, that's pretty much it, supposedly, which is uh, pretty, pretty good. That was very quick. That took 16 and a half minutes it will probably take you less time because um, obviously I'm filming as well and that's ready to be plugged in let's switch it on the printer did include this little silicon heater block so I will be putting that on because it doesn't come on the printer straight away um, probably a good idea to do this when the printer isn't on the move axis screen on the printer is a little bit confusing Well, maybe not confusing as such, but it's uh, it probably could have been done a little bit neater. It's everything on the screen at once, where uh, it's not really needing to all be there at once. The silicon pocket wraps around the heater block nicely. It's a really good fit. 
Okay, so all that's to do now really is get this preheating. Preheat, bed temp, you can click the preheat PLA button. It would call the bed temp of 50 and the extruder temperature of 190. I think 190 is quite low, but um, start with that, see how we get on. I'll then go find some filament that will actually fit this little holder, such as this. It's probably enough to do whatever the test print is. It's got a filament runout sensor, which is uh, always handy. Although it depends how the uh, sensor is actually implemented. Because filament runout sensors that allow the whole bed and everything to turn off are fairly pointless because the print will detach. Seems to have heated up pretty quickly, which is good. Uh, one thing to note is that where it's transported, this Bowden tube will probably have got a bit squashed. So it might be worth just giving it a flex just to sort of ease the pressure on the filament coming through. Make sure it's a nice curve rather than a sharp bend. Perfect. It's got a BMG style dual drive gear clone, which uh, yeah, looks quite nice. It's got assisted uh, filament insertion and removal by the look of it. I'll try it. Filament remove. Although bizarrely, it was heated to 190 and to remove the filament, it wants to heat up to 230. Uh, it's just decided to do that itself. Okay, that's fine. We'll, uh, we'll wait for that. Generally speaking with these machines, you know, even something like the Ultimaker 3 that I've got behind me, most of the time I just do the filament changes myself because by the time you have to wait for the system to decide it's ready to go, um, you could have just done it. So it's nice that they do them, but I, uh, I never use them personally myself, but I am just for the purposes of this video. Filament remove. Okay, it's going, it's going. So generally speaking, I mean, certainly for the automaker, when it's doing a filament remove, it does it really quick uh, in terms of the actual pulling out of the filament. But this is this is really quite slow. So yeah, just just do it yourself. It, you really don't need to wait wait for this sort of thing to happen. Tick tock, tick tock. Still going, and it's sort of got wedged now. So yeah, I have to pull the last bit out myself anyway. Uh, so yes, just uh, load and unload the filament yourself. To do that, take the filament, push it through the Bowden tube. Oh, actually, it doesn't even look like it knows when it's uh, it's removed the full length of filament, so you have to stop it as well. Okay, so yeah. So, if you're inserting filament, you just take it, push it through the Bowden tube, open up the clasp of the um, extruder drive gear, push the filament through yourself, push, 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 until you can feel the increase of the pressure, which means it's hit the extruder itself, and then you should be able to see it coming out of the extruder nozzle. And that takes seconds. So, yeah, that's the way I'd suggest doing that. Right, let's give the uh, the test print a go, which I presume, I'll presume there'll be one included on the SD card. Go to print. It's got a few on here. It's got the owl pair. Right, okay, let's give that a go then. Quite like the owls. Click print. While it's heating, talk about some of the features I can notice on this machine. It comes with a glass ultra base. Uh, this is uh, one of these bed surfaces where you supposedly don't need to do anything with it. It just works as it is. In my experience of ultra base, I find they are not bad. If you're heating them up to at least 60 degrees, if you're heating them less than that, then I find they don't really do a lot. So the difficulty I'm seeing at the moment is that the optimal position it said for the Z axis isn't tight enough down on the bed so that you have enough play with the Z adjustment screws. Um, it's sort of at the point where some of the Z adjustment screws are already very loose. 
so I can't make the bed come up any higher. If the optimal position for the extruder was a little bit lower in the build, then I could tighten the screws much more. I'd have much more control at that point, if that makes sense. Um, where that happens, what you could do is lower the Z end stop it's in round over there. So you could play with that. Another thing I do, which is a bit hacky, is just turn the Z couplers to uh, override the, the position. So that's the test print done, the his and hers owls came out quite nicely. To be honest, first impressions wise, I'm really impressed with this little machine. It's uh, been really easy to set up, as I say, about 16 minutes it took me out of the box to piece it all together and then not much longer to actually get a first print going and the first print has worked well. A um, few observations I would say, just being a little bit critical, is that there is a bit of uh, vibration marks, sort of artifacts coming in on the print. Uh, I suspect that's from this heavy head moving back and forth. And so, you know, the stock acceleration and jerk settings for this machine might be a bit high. Um, if you needed to get absolutely flawless prints, then you're going to want to slow it down a bit, slow, lower those jerk and acceleration settings. But generally speaking, for a print with, you know, random, random material, Using this stock settings, it's came out really well. There's no, there's not really any retraction marks between the prints, um, so it's it's pretty pretty impressive to be honest. I uh, yeah yeah very impressed. The only thing I'd say, maybe a, a sort of a new user might have some difficulty with the bed leveling, but if you take your time, play around with it, you you will pick it up. It's it's a skill that you learn. With anything so yeah I mean first impressions wise I'm, I'm certainly impressed I've not even had a chance to test the lazy yet but I will do that in another video um, I've also quickly upgraded the spool holder so it fits my own spools um, so obviously that's what I'll be using with it going forward as you can see here I just added on a little round round spool holder um, I will I will tweak that design a bit more and then uh, I'll put that on Thingiverse and put the link in the description down below. Yeah, if you have any questions about this printer or anything so far, then uh, drop them drop them down below, and I will do a follow up review video once I've had this printer for a few weeks and I've had chance to to give it a proper testing. But yeah, first impressions wise, it's definitely a thumbs up from me. See you next week. Cheers.